Please drop yourself in. Wood were prohibited. Not available in the state of shop. Whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait. Before we run the interview, we've got to tell you, Drum Talk TV had the privilege of being in the studio at Capitol Records while Louis Prima Jr. and The Witnesses were recording their new album, Blow, which is out now. We also had the privilege of sitting with Louis and drummer A.D. Adams to talk about the making of the album, the good old days with Louis Sr. And at the time, there were some things they couldn't talk about, couldn't answer, and some questions they even didn't know the answers to yet. So as the interview goes, we'll drop in some of that info. This is a fun interview with some fun guys making some of the most fun music on the planet. So sit back, enjoy A.D. Adams with Louis Prima Jr. here on Drum Talk TV. Hey everybody, welcome to Drum Talk TV. I'm Dan Schindler here with my guests. Yes, plural, A.D. Adams returning to the show with Louis Prima Jr. Thank you both. So much for, for joining us. us. It's awesome. Thanks for having us. Good to see you again, brother. Good to see you too, brother. Great Absolutely. to see you. Pleasure great to, to meet see you, you too, and great to see you in action here at Capitol Records Studio B. They're recording their new CD, which is titled. I uh, don't have a title for it yet. Um, so we're having a contest right here in Jump Talk TV. <laughs> I vote, let's call it A.D. Adams. With his, like it. with his backing <laughs> band, Louis Prima like and the Witnesses. Yeah. A.D. Adams and the Louis Prima Jr. Witnesses Band yeah. boys. It, is it <laughs> Nine significant others. Right. Is it intentional that you don't have a title yet because you want to wait till the thing's done, see the vibe of it, the, what exactly. songs end exactly. up? Exactly. Okay. You know, we, the, the first CD, I don't think I had a title for it until they, we really had to go to press. Right. Um, so I do think, you, you listen know, to it a lot? Let it sit with you and decide: what, is it a song track title or is it? That's it. You, yeah. you want to hear the vibe of it, also the you know the total vibe. Um, you know, we got a few tricks up our sleeves with this CD, so I'm gonna wait and see what happens. And uh, you know, because it uh, there's a there's a lot riding on this CD, man. We're moving forward. We're we're plowing ahead. We're bringing this music into the. The, the century that we're in, the decade yeah. that we're in, and we're, we're making the, the sound our own, um, which is right. something I've looked forward to for seven years. Right, and you know, you bring up something, Louis, that um, I was going to ask you about, and it's something AD and I have talked about. I'm not sure if we talked about this in your first interview, but we've talked about it on the phone and in person, and that is that you're right, we're in the second decade mm -hmm. of the 21st century, right. and this amazing music that goes way back to your dad's era, you know, this whether it's swing, big band, the whole old style Americana is so much flourishing in 2013. What's up with that when there's still all this hard rock, heavy metal, right. punk rock, country, you know, everything well, else? I, you know, there's something I always say about this music and that it's, it's happy music and makes you feel good. Right. And so much of uh, music within the past few decades since grunge kind of hit it is a little bit dark and depressing and, and glorifies anger and glorifies X, yeah, Y, Z, whatever, whatever right. it's glorifying instead of being what music has been about since cavemen, right. which is an escape, a dance, a happiness, From that. fun. Yeah. Uh, you know, you're supposed to escape, not not relive it through music, and that's why this will maintain. And you know, what we're trying, what I'm trying to do, what we're trying to do, um, is what my father did. My father kept that shuffle beat that he started with when he was a kid, right. born at you know, born at New Orleans, uh, and he used just that kind of theme through five decades of changing styles and, and being at the forefront of whatever was popular right. up, up into the 70s with, you know, with young cats in the band, you know, with the big huge sideburns and they were playing rock and roll. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of what we're doing, you know, because it's, it's more about the vibe of the music than trying to say daddy-o in every song. Right. Plus, you can't <laughs> do the Lindy Hop to any grunge. No, exactly. So you can hurt yourself. <laughs> you know, it's slow and yeah. angry. <laughs> but it, it, you know, it's, it's basically just great music and, and, and great musicians uh, that I have. And, and, and we have, you know, it's we now. It's, it's a band. It's what I've looked forward to right. um, for a long time. And it's been... It's been three years that we've been honing this sound and this unit and camaraderie that we have into the collaboration that is going to be this album because this is for the most part all original with a couple exceptions right. yeah the, the, the last three years really kind of led us to this week here at capitol right um just forming the vibe 
you know, figuring out exactly, you know, I mean, we kind of know who we are we, as individuals, but as a band, you know, and you and I talked about this before, you know, with a with a, just a rock and rhythm section, yeah, and and traditional but modern horns, and melding that together, and and you know, you kind of put it in a blender, and before you take that first sip, it's like, man, what's this gonna taste like, yeah. you know, and man, it's. Pretty good. That's it's pretty cool. sweet. It's, it's pretty, pretty tasty, good. man. You know, before I ask you more about um, the actual metamorphosis of the mm -hmm. band itself, I want to sort of spin that same question I asked a moment ago to AD. As a drummer, you know, the same question I asked both of you and that Louis answered, as a drummer, you know, you play some other stuff that's borderline punk ska, you play hard rock, you know, I've been to your the open jam thing that you host. Yeah. Yet you, your heart is really with this music that's the old style, the oh, swing yeah, and the big yeah, band and yeah. everything. Um, we're about the same age, mm -hmm. so and we're kind of young. We're no, all kind of young. 30s, mm -hmm. right? To, yeah, but we're all kind of young to, to it's not Stick like we yourself. grew. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Take a time out, put your head down, I'll ask him the questions. <laughs> but other than you growing up with this because of your father, mm -hmm. none of us are really of the generation that grew up with it. So what's your attraction to it? How have you been able to keep your pulse on that style and generation of music? You know, I, I, I believe that you don't have to be from a certain generation to discover that music and appreciate and, and yeah you know and as, as yeah. you get older and especially for the young musicians out there go back Do, you know it yeah music's progressing forward but you gotta go back know where and it came from what you're it listening made of. To yeah you yeah. know and, and and when you go back you realize that man you know his dad you know bands like you know like well mm. you know krupa <clears> and, <throat> but but his dad's band was a rock band i mean you know you could take it you could take the uh the 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 analogy of, of, of classical music and you had your your Strausses and they were sort right. of the you know the wall see the air supply of right. you know and then <laughs> you the had classics. your Paganini who was like the Van Halen of you know right. and so every every style of music has the harder stuff and the softer stuff you know style wise speaking and uh, Prima rocks it yeah. just does and I don't care what era it's you're from or what era you could listen to Prima from the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s on up through the 70s, and it's kicking your butt and it's moving yeah. and it's fun and and when you hit and, and it's everywhere. That's another thing too. It's it just it hasn't been left behind. Right. It's it's still with us. I mean, you can't turn on a television show, you can't watch a movie without hearing, you know, some form of that style of music, and and you can't help but when you hear it. All of a sudden, the head starts bobbing. Oh, yeah. The corner of the mouth starts coming up, and it's the like, feet yeah, are tapping. Yeah, yeah, you know, and, and it's infectious. And all you have to do is be willing to discover that. Yeah. Right. And you're hooked, man. You know, and, the, and the, the other thing as, a, as an artist with this music is it's challenging. Absolutely. You know, it is yeah. not something that you grew up learning how to play. It's, right. it's not something that they really teach. No. Right. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, drums alone. It, there, there's a it, it, extreme challenge to playing this and understanding the thought process. In, you know, when when in, you get into, you know, piano or guitar, the the chord changes don't make sense. And this mm -hmm. doesn't. How how did they make that fit over that? Right. So it's 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 you know we all want to be challenged with yeah. what we're doing. Right. You know, or we'd be doing three chord. Yeah, you know, exactly. rock in a bistro somewhere, and right. you know, <laughs> exactly. And and that's what I enjoy about it is the yeah. just the, it's it's a difficulty level, you know. It's stepping up and challenging ourselves with this CD on wh where can we take it and can we make this just a little bit tougher than we know how to play and, and right. then let's see if we can do it live. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I guess I got to go back and learn yeah, these now songs. Go learn it too. Oh, yeah. man. You know, your father had some amazing drummers between Jimmy, Bobby, and John. And, oh, yeah. You know, through the years, just amazing drummers. You're, you're stuck with this guy. <laughs> oh, I don't call it but, that, man. But I've heard, I've heard the story of how when he was coming to you to play and doesn't know the shuffle, does he know, do you know the shuffle? Yeah. I heard all that. My question is, when you set out to do this and to do it the way you wanted to do it, where did you start in your mind when it came to, I have this sound in my head, 
you know, I'm going to be doing a lot of my dad's music, mm -hmm. you know, all these, and you, you know it's got to be up to a certain level for it to be acceptable whatsoever. And where did you begin in putting this band together? You know, it's been a long, long haul. Um, you know, and I started with, you know, hired guns sitting behind charts, which I absolutely respect them for what they do, but it is not what I wanted. I wanted You wanted a band, I wanted right? A band. Yeah. I wanted I you know, I don't want a guy a different guy in every town. I don't want yeah. I didn't want guys that were not going to be available if, you know, for the gig. Right. Uh, and I wanted guys that that not just believed in the music, but believed in the attitude. The mission, the whole and, thing. Right? And yeah. wanted to contribute something and create something new. Mm -hmm. And I certainly didn't want anybody that knew more than me. Not saying I know it all. What I'm saying is, I don't know more than him on the drums. Right. Okay? He can teach me. Uh, he doesn't know more than my guitar player about guitar. Right. So it, it's kind of a, you know, I, I wanted guys that were humble enough to, as a group, sit in a room together and yell at each other about a part in a song and come to an agreement and learn something off each and other. And respect each other knowing they're experts at their own craft, right? right? You yeah. know, and, and you know, the, the one thing about A.D., when he walked in, did he know the shuffle? He knew enough about it to play it, okay? Mm -hmm. But he listened to me when I said, it's, this is what I want to hear, and yeah. the next time we got together, he, he had gone and done the homework yeah. and yeah. came back and said, I'll play this. Yeah, but you yeah. know that's the you thing know? about that shuffle is that you you know it right, and then it's like he you, says, "Yeah, you know that's that's it." But if you do this, if you tweak it here, yeah. and you, you know nudge it here, boom, boom, and it was like that's it, you know. And, and when yeah. I, when it, that's what he thought, he grew up with it. You yeah, know? it's like it's like mother's milk. To him, yeah, you know. And so you think you go, man, this is great. I got this down. And he's like, yeah, you got it down. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, let's and then, and then you tweak it. You know, and, and it was, and, and it, but it was doing that that, you know, I, I wanted guys that, you know, I'm, I'm probably not as knowledgeable as everybody in my band musically, okay? Mm -hmm. But I know what I want it to sound like, and I know yeah. where I want it to go. So right. it was finding guys that would l listen and, and, and find our groove, be willing to delve into this music and learn it not just play a part right you know yeah absolutely to be a part of it and and move it forward gel as a unit and then you know lucky enough to find a label that believed in us and a label that believed that we could move forward to the next step and not be you know i've never wanted to be a tribute band that was the most important thing yeah okay Paying um, tribute is one thing, but exactly. to be a tribute band was another. That was yeah. the farthest thing from my mind, and it wasn't until, you know, three, and you know what, AD and Ryan were the last couple of the band, so it's coming up three years ago next month, Absolutely. and uh, it wasn't until them two hit that, that all of a sudden I, I've got guys that are going to, this is what I want, yeah. this, is, this is what we all need. And it, you know, it's been a fun ride getting here, and I can't wait to see where we go from here. Oh, this album's gonna be killer. It's, it's gonna it's, be killer. We were talking about that enormous, last. Enormous, man. Yeah. It's, it's, it's so it's cool. We were talking about last night, you know, stylistically speaking, because you know there are the different. I mean, when you say rock, how many styles of rock are All there? Of them. I mean, you've got right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got Leonard Skinner to, to uh, Motorhead, yeah, and exactly. Everything between and exactly. Tool, whoever. Mm -hmm. But you say jazz, it's the same thing, and you've yeah. got your. You know, your smooth jazz, and you've got your instrumental jazz, and you've got your swing jazz, and all this. So that range goes from here to here. Yeah. And again, you, we, we, when we shook this thing up and served it, you know, downstairs in the studio, when, when we came in here and in, and in pre production back in Phoenix, you know, you put it together and, and you wonder how it's going to sit in that realm. Where's it going to sit on that scale? And, and we were talking about that last night, and it's like, you know, it's not even in between this and this. It's out. So we we've That's completely cool. crossed the borders. We've gone outside the extreme. You know, like you take the the, the hottest jump in a swing band. And we're gonna outswing them. Yeah. And you take the smoothest, coolest, like sexiest, cool jazz. We're gonna outsexy them too. You know, and yeah. and it's so it's outside of all these realms. Well, ha has that happened by the intentional? innovation or has it happened just by doing what you're doing and with this particular uh, chemistry of guys that's what happened to happen 100 percent just happened that's so cool you know yeah. and and there was there was no concerted effort to sit down and write this type of song or create this type of sound it yeah. was let's it was okay we've all been together for three years now so what do we sound like well we sound like us 
Yeah. And it ends up being where you described on that scale. Yeah, and so, you know, let's get together and let, let's throw a lick in the, in, in, in the bucket and shake it and yeah. everybody contribute and, and you got a song. And, you know, it's, it's, it is neat. The, the creative process here was um, surprisingly simple. Yeah. Um, and the, you know, the contribution of everybody and the willingness to learn and, and, and take suggestion. And we, I mean, we really do have some monster tracks here. Every time, you know, as we're going through parts and doing things, you know, ID says, my favorite song on here, the next song. Oh my it's God, no, this is my favorite <laughs> song. <laughs> oh no, this is my favorite song. <laughs> You make up your mind. I can't yeah. make up my mind. And when you can't, that's when you know you have a polished gem. Yeah, just exactly. Got, you break open the rock and nothing else needs to be done to it. It just yeah. needs to be right. mounted, you know? You know, we don't even have vocals on this thing yeah, yet. Yeah, we haven't, yeah, I just, haven't even done a vocal. We're not going to jack it up with that, are you? No. <laughs> Lord. Pretty much you know, Lord, just screw that up with my voice. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Now, uh, the, as I drop in a picture, um, I'm dropping in some pictures from the studio because mm -hmm. we were able to mingle around oh. while you were recording earlier and um, uh, it's cool how easy the process is looking and how fun it's looking and how how regimented it is at the same time you get a great producer mm -hmm. on board definitely put a plug in for Jim and Jim Jim say a few you know, things the, about him God bless Jim Irvin and Warrior Records when I met this guy you know, he distributed alone our, our last um, CD, you know, and, and, and I, we got, you know, a, pretty much a Lady Gaga deal. It was worldwide distribution, yeah, record stores, etc. cetera. Um, and again, I have to say, for this kind of music, right. in this day and age, well, that's mind-blowing to me. Was a, number one, it was a, it, it, it's a company and a person that does honest business, and you really don't find a lot of that in the record industry, unfortunately. Um, so that was refreshing, uh, but one of the first things he said in our first conversation was, you know, we're, we're, we're going to do okay with this first one. I want number two. And that's why I'm here. So he's thinking long-term, big yeah. picture, and, which is You know, and we guys. moved along, and we moved along, and we had a vision of what we wanted to do, and, you know, sometime, wow, what was it, uh, November, maybe last year, October, November, when me and him sat down, had a dinner, we were playing in a... Uh, Malibu, and yep. uh, he said, "Let's uh, let's go original with the CD. I, I, I dig the stuff you guys do live when you break away from the mold, and I want to hear that." So we, uh, you know, that, and I, I don't know if I knew that we were ready for that. I know I knew I wanted it to be. Right. You know? um, not that I don't love doing my father's music, because I love that music. But you know what? I want people to sing our songs. I want people to Nothing enjoy with that. what we yeah. created, and I think we can take what I take. He left off in '75, mm -hmm. and I think you know we skipped a couple decades, but we're just going to take the I, take I the think, torch. Yeah, I was mm -hmm. just going to say it, move it forward. That is know? absolutely um, a legitimate and appropriate way for you to all carry on that legacy. Right. Doing your father's music is great because that music will live on forever, right. whether you're doing it or people are playing the records or someone exactly. else is covering it. But for you to then now be writing, what, the first new, as you told me, Prima I'm material in 40, 40 years, years. that's what a way to care. I'm getting goosebumps yeah. just thinking to carry that on. How does that make you feel? It's, I, I'm telling you I'm the most fortunate person in show business. Yeah. This, I get to stand on stage every night with yeah. these eight morons behind me <laughs> no. and, and that, that just make me do nothing but make me enjoy myself on a nightly basis. That's it is great. so much fun to have a band. You know, when I, when I was doing rock and roll, I couldn't get four people to get along. Yeah. We go out on the road and have a great time and we're friends and, and yeah. it's, it's a unit, unit, man. man. Yeah. It's a unit, you know. Yeah. I'm a guy with a name and a vehicle to get us where we want to be. But it's the unit that thrives and survives, and we're yeah. First we're time we got there, Louis, he's like, you know, I don't want to rely on that. I mean, we got the, we have the opportunity because of the premium name, which is fantastic. But he goes, yeah. it's not where I want to end up. It's not what I want to be. I don't right. want to be a Frank Sinatra Jr. I don't want to be a, you know, I want, you know, I want to do my own thing. And and, you know, we put the band together, and that's it. You know, and and and, I think when we were talking about Jim Irvin earlier, is that. Rarely do you have the opportunity to work with a producer who also happens to own the record label because usually 
they're at loggerheads, you know. Yeah. Do this faster, or you're over budget, or this or that. Hey, he's got the budget. He's, yeah. he's writing a check, yeah. you know. So, having this guy who's who's such a, a a renowned producer, who's got the vision that that completely matches ours. Right. He knows exactly where he wants to go, and it happens to be exactly where we want to go. And then you've got a band full of you know, really good good players with the same vision. And who are all we're, we're all studio rats. I mean, yeah. you know, so you get that environment; it's a perfect storm. Yeah, yeah. you know, and, absolutely. And, and the music that we're playing downstairs, it shows that. Yeah, and I'm dropping in another picture now because a lot of people don't know that you are a drummer also. Yes. And I got a couple of pictures of you creeping <laughs> yeah. up behind Everybody AD, behind him, playing his kit with him, and then you were telling me that there's some dual drum solo. Uh. What's up with that? Can you talk about it? Yeah, man. It's just, you know, we do sing, sing, sing. You got to do sing, 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 right. you know, the Krupa thing, you know, and which everybody always relates to Benny Goodman, but but Louis Prima wrote that. Yeah. He wrote that song. So, you know, we do the big when feature. He was like 24. Time. Come on. Yeah, right? That's crazy. What was I doing at 20? Never mind. Never mind. Yeah. I don't even go there. I can't there. say. <laughs> I don't even go there. Yeah. I shouldn't but have said where we're at. I'll come get you. I would have taped. We're okay. Is this PG? <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, so, so you know, you got to do the obligatory sing, 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 which I, I shouldn't even say that. We get to play. We get yeah. to sing every night, yeah. you know. But um, so, you know, I'm doing a drum solo and. I don't even, I don't, as I recall, I don't I think even I think just it did was it on planned. accident. Yeah, he just, just kind of wanders up on up and day. like, hey, what are you doing back here? <laughs> Having a good night here, you know? He's kind of leaning over. He's kind of hanging and grabs a pair of sticks. So, yeah, pretty good solo, huh? And then he's like, boom, boom, oh, yeah, come on in, you know? And then, uh, and then it progressed, you know? So, and, and we really never worked anything out, but. Well, but, the, and, well, and the funny thing is, you know, it's turned into our little portion of the show every night to let loose. And you kind of don't know what we're going to do. And it started in Chicago. <laughs> well, we it, start, it, started in, it started in Chicago. I think I had only pounded away behind him a couple times. And we're sitting at this booth. And the, it was a father-son owned this food booth. And they go, do Freebird. <laughs> All right? <laughs> I think we, we'll feed you tomorrow. Yeah, do Freebird. Free <laughs> so we, we get there. We're all like, yeah, we can do it. Blah, blah. And we sit there talking to the guy for a while. We, we take off, and the next night we're going to the show. And I turn around in the van and I go, Freebird won't work, but we could probably pull off Sweet Home Alabama. And everybody went, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I look at my guy. horn player and I go, you guys can come up with a horn line on the fly, right? Yeah, we can do this, this. Okay. <laughs> I go, AD, sing it. Ah, he goes, no. And then I go, yeah. He goes, all right, we can do that. And then, you know, it's an hour later and we're at the show and I don't think anybody really thought I would do it, but I got back to our jam with him and I go, are you getting up? Or not? Yeah, so we're in a heat of battle. <laughs> we're, we're in a heat and I've battle. heard you sing. I've seen you get up and He's sing at the open singer, jam man. set. I've been there for yeah. Yeah. And so you know, and that's kind of where it started. And then you know, so and so will get up and sing something. So everybody in the band gets to goof around a little yeah, bit. The crowd loves it. I get it. to get my drum chops off for just a second yeah. and have a little fun. You know, and that, that I think that's why our live show goes over so well is it's fun. And you it, know, yeah. The, yeah. the art of entertainment is gone in this business yeah. unless you got 30 dancers behind you shaking their yeah rear. and pyro you know, proper you know yeah. amount of no pyro this is a this is enter it, this, i got entertainers with me it's coming That's from awesome. the gut it, it really yeah. is coming from the gut and it's raw and, it, and it, you know it's you're not going to get the same show every night you're going to get yeah. the same value every night you're going to get the same entertainment you're going to get the same vibe every night but, but there's enough elasticity sure. in the whole thing for it to be if someone came to see you three four nights in a row they gotta see gonna a different see show oh yeah That's he's gonna cool. call out a song we haven't done in in six weeks and you know boom hey play you know whatever <laughs> one two and i'm going i don't think i remember this one you know? and one guy yelling what yeah. key was it <laughs> yeah, in? Yeah, right yeah. you know you get and that but I'm, I'm like one of the last uh, there's maybe five of us in the country that don't use set lists. Yeah, set lists, man. Right. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. What are we doing? Wouldn't yeah. have it any other way, that. though, because because I think that really keeps us as a band on our toes. Fresh. You, you know? and it keeps it exciting. It certainly must keep it from being mundane. You guys were on tour for five weeks, right? And isn't that one of the ways to get through that is to, you got to have fun. Yeah. When it starts to feel like work, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. You know, you get to shake it up every night, too. And, and you know, in downtime, when I'm at home, I'm woodshedding at, the, you know, at my studio. You know, I got a whole catalog. What did we? 
catalog of, of 35, 40 songs that we play live. Mm -hmm. You know, and it could be, you know, I mean, there's a main and set. That, and but, it's a yeah. constant growing. But you, you know, you got to stay sharp on all those songs because you never know what this guy's yeah. going to call out. And, and it's so, it really, you're not playing the same stuff. And, and, and if you do that too often, you start to phone it in. You know, it, yeah. it, it, that spontaneity and, 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 and just sort of living on the edge, staying on that edge, I think keeps us all really sharp. Yeah, absolutely. otherwise maybe you become a cover band of yourself. Yeah, absolutely. You know, because you're just yeah. going through the motions and trying to hit the bullet points and right. make it Everybody sound like this. Everybody goes to the same part of the stage at the same time Yeah. every song. I yeah. I mean, we crack, our, it, we crack ourselves up on stage. Oh, it's, absolutely. It, it, they're not really inside jokes. You know, the, the trombone player is, you know, what do you do? The, in New York, he walks up to the front of the stage and he does this feature thing and all of a sudden he just stopped playing, the band stopped and he starts doing this sumo Super thing. And we're just thing. lying. We're like, like <laughs> what is this? Had no what idea. Is, what, what is going on? <laughs> and people in the audience at first are like, what? You know, and five <laughs> seconds into it, 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 the place is erupting and, yeah. and just like, ah, you know, and, and so us funny. included, you know? Yeah. It's a big, that's a big part of the show is that spontaneity and that, that energy, that spark. That, right. That, is is sorely missing nowadays. It's a wild start, man. Yeah, man. What are the plans? You get to do a bunch of local shows in, you know, I'm in Vegas. We're based right. in Vegas. You oh, do a I didn't bunch know of, that. Yeah. We're going to do a bunch of shows in Vegas, or were you going to do a tour or come yeah, out here to be, L.A.? We're going to be started on Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, well, there's no great live. There's very there's little very great little, live very music. Live. I shouldn't say, there, there's, you know, great, there's great live music. So. They just yeah. have no place to play. I was just going to say, you know, there are, my wife is a big jazz aficionado, mm -hmm. and there's nowhere for us to go see live jazz. They closed all the jazz it's clubs. It's pretty sad. It's a shame. You know what? We're we will, um, we will we will tour pretty extensively next year. We've got a couple okay, little things in the bag that uh, uh, to premiere the CD that I, I can't really talk about till they really happen. I don't want to jinx them, but uh, we're fortunate enough to have just forged a relationship and uh, signed on with William Morris. Nice. Um, Good. That's going to take us, you know. That's that's another vehicle to take the step forward. Uh, you know, I've got a management company, UD Factory, out of Vegas that 100% mm -hmm. believes and and works their little tails off for us. So, you know, we're gonna when it comes out, we're gonna we're gonna just hit the ground running where we left off this summer. You know, we're gonna we're tying up the end of this year as we always do down in New Orleans. Uh, home sweet know. home. Home sweet home. That's I'm good. anxious to get it out because I listen to this and, and just smile. I, I looked around the room a couple times yesterday and just everybody smiling going, wow, I just did that, didn't I? Let, let's <laughs> give everybody a taste of, you know, we've talked about it so much and does it look like I have radiation poisoning or something? <laughs> um, As the sun sets, can I move back? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Like yeah. And it's facing west. Um, my my thing is, you know, we've talked about this so much, and there's a lot of people that just aren't exposed to this this culture of mm -hmm. music. What is one of your favorite songs that we can drop in some of right now and show a clip of? What would you like? Uh, us probably to the about? best one uh, that we've been doing is our opener right now, which is "Oh Babe." Uh, that's the that's the lead track off the first CD. Okay. Um, it's you know it was written by my father. Um, a uh, huge hit for him in the big band era, and we kind of took, I took several versions of it and threw it, you know, did a shake up of it and did our own little version, um, uh, and you know the the we got to perform that on uh, Access Hollywood Live, yeah, so great. you know you'll let's get to drop see that, that in right now. That in right you have there. a live link you're gonna give me? Absolutely. So consider me just catching it. We're gonna put it in. <laughs> Here it is. There it is. Oh babe, check it out. Is the technology not awesome? First you say hello, then you get mellow. Must be lazy, you gotta be crazy. Want to get started? With these walking avenues, you're shaking and you're breaking and you're open. You knocking and you're rocking and you're open. You moving and you're moving and you're open. You slipping and you're dipping and you're open. And the world turns upside down. That gives you an idea of why this music has had such longevity, such stay power, 
such a long shelf life and now we've got a great band and Louis Prima Jr. and the witnesses to carry this on yeah. for who knows what another 10 30 years maybe I'm going until I'm dropping baby <laughs> I, it, it, and you're young. There's, no, there's no stopping us you know not, not with this group not with the group of guys and, and the team machine. around us you know awesome. the, the endorsers the the every everybody that's come together in this group that uh, contribute to what we do and make it possible for us great well, I appreciate you both coming on Thanks yeah. so much for, for being us, a man. part of our world and letting Thank us be you. a part Thank of yours. You. Um, it really is an honor. It really is. Absolutely. I just got to say one more thing for those who don't know. You know, Jungle Book. Your father yeah. was King Louis in Jungle Book. And every little kid from, we're probably around the same age, yeah. I'm 50? Yeah, I'm right there. Okay. So every little kid from our age, older, my kids are all grown up now and everything like yeah. that. Everybody does that. Song. Yeah, everybody. And then uh, AD told me in the elevator today that a weird serendipitous well, it was, moment it happened. It was actually it? as we were, you know, the, the Capitol Rex is where my father recorded all through the 50s and into the early 60s. Um, you know, I'm I'm uh, I'm holding a trumpet down in the studio that's in one of the pictures that uh, yeah, and that picture this I'm walls. showing that picture right yeah. now, and AD was saying that your dad was standing right where his drums are set exactly. up right now, which is really you know, cool. Uh, so that so there's a big Feel piece it, of history here to begin with, you know, which we're honored to be a part of. But we're walking in today. We we leave the hotel. Me, AD, and Ryan riding together, and uh, guys, you know, guy walking in behind us says, you know, is that a trumpet? which leads to who are you mm -hmm. uh which leads to come back here to the mastering studios where they master music and they're they're mastering for disney a compilation cd and they're mastering i want to be like you as i'm from jungle the book and, and right. so it's you know, my father's and you know what are the chances you know yeah i try not to happen i try not to ever ask dumb questions yeah. on this show and hopefully <laughs> i don't you know and i, I know pe so far. i know people say there's no such thing as a dumb question but guess what i have four kids my wife has there's some dumb there's questions. some yeah. dumb yeah. questions, questions out there, but my question is do do you, I don't know how else to ask this, do you realize who your dad was? Do you realize oh, the impression that he made on the musical world and pop culture of that time that carried over into our generations? You know, it, I absolutely do, and we get to live it at every single show, because Great. at every single show, you get that person that's crying. I was just gonna say, I think you know, we gotta go, because I think I'm gonna get, cry. You get that, <laughs> you get that <laughs> person that was touched so deeply by what he did. Yeah. At every show we get yeah, it. Man. At every show. Count and, on it. and, you know, because it's not so much his contribute, contribution to music, it was his contribution to people. Yeah. And, and what his, what he did, and what his band did, and what they did every night, day in and day out, what that did, for the people that got to experience him. Yeah. You can and take a record home, but people took Louis Prima to heart. Oh, and that oh, was yeah. gener you know, generations. I mean he was he was making hits for fifty years, you yeah. know. So people grew up with him, they got married to him, they grew old and had children to him, they played those records for their children and then their grandchildren. Yeah. I mean, look at the and scope of that, 50 years. Yeah, man. that's crazy. Nobody, when bands nobody. today last three years, uh, yeah, four years. Right? Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's... And relevant for 50 years, not, you know, yeah. God, 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 I'm, you know, I, I'm, I don't want to dog anybody, but like Aerosmith is, they're playing Aerosmith music. They've been yeah. doing it for a long time. Yeah. My father changed. For 50 years, he changed. It was something well, different. Yeah. yeah, it's not that he was playing the same set um, or the same stuff for that. Right, just, yeah. Just fantastic stuff. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we and we get to experience it anew because I, I I can honestly tell you that we're doing the same thing for yeah. the people to come to see us. And right. the audience, the, the the age of the audience is 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 expanding so rapidly. When we first started out, you know, we were we were playing some you know some festival shows, which you know you're gonna get all ages, large festivals, and but you know some of the smaller places we play theaters and things like that. You know, at first the, the audiences were a little older and, you know, and they'd bring their kids and whatever, but for the most part, but wherever we go now, the audiences, I mean, you're, you're getting kids, you're getting teenagers. We played our last show on the last tour was in, in Buffalo and there was a, I would have maybe a 20 foot gap between the front of the stage and, and yeah, the front row. front row. And we hit the stage and within seconds, the place was flooded with young kids just That's going. Great. 
I mean, just going nuts. Mm -hmm. Teenagers, 20 year olds, and yeah. and we're looking out there, and that's all you could see, and we're like, well, this is this is, this is fantastic, you stuff. know. Very so, good stuff. Yeah. yeah, man. Great. Thanks again so much for oh, being absolutely. on. Absolutely. My pleasure. Thank you, everybody, for joining me, Dan Schinder, here on Drum Talk TV with Louis Prima Jr. and A.D. Adams, carrying the torch, relighting a new one that yep. will last hopefully another 50 years, and we'll still be around to uh, bring you those interviews, too, then. Definitely. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next time. Thank you, Thank you very Thank you. much. Thanks, A.D. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, guys.